Uh, I'm 56 now, so you know which year I am. One year junior to Josh Kurian, and most of them, uh, Matai Chen and uh, yeah, Avra Chen were all my super seniors when we joined. So, I wanted to start a small incident. What happened? I am from Kota. It's a it's a town. Uh, it's called a rubber town, latex town. Uh, it's nothing fancy in it. So I, from there, I got through engineering college and I went there. So first year, I thought an idea. You know, it'll be a great thing if we have a T-shirt of our own. The engineers or the engineering students should have a T-shirt. So. I called a couple of my friends and I told them, see, we haven't seen any kind of, because we are very fresh, very new. Why don't we get a t-shirt with some logo on it and we can sell and make money. So this is some of the, well, in one of the evening talks it came up. So the great guy who is sitting here itself, Joe Squirian and another person, Celestine, Celestine is in Texas. They took it seriously and they said, can you develop a logo for that, or a, a motto of some kind? So I did, I did that. I said that we move the world. And the background, we gave a Rekka REC, that emblem with, you know, the moving nucleus kind of stuff. And it was just a talk and then they did it. Surprisingly, after a couple of months, mm. I saw bundles of T-shirts coming to our hostel. And Joss and Celestine, they made a team. I think they went to Tirupur. They worked out a good deal with them. And they printed these T-shirts. And T-shirts were selling like hotcakes. I don't remember, Celeste, uh, Joe's, do you remember what is the cost you were selling at that time? Maybe around 100 rupees? You are... Yes, you are muted. Yes, you are muted. No, we cannot hear you. Yeah, we cannot hear Joe's. Yeah. So, I think it is around 100 rupees and... Even the final year students in the North Indians were standing in queue in, in the air hostel to get this stuff. So I thought, my God, what a kind of response we are getting when we try to put something new into the market. So I was thinking about this. And during those days, the first years, the time, our great uh, professor, Dr. Subramani Iyer, we call him Vatumani, is no more. May God give him solace in his mighty paradise. So, Dr. Mani came to the class and said, do you know the difference between an engineer and a layman? A lot of people said a lot of things. And he said, an engineer is somebody who could able to make something for two rupees, which a common man can make only for five rupees. The so engineer is somebody who is adding value to an item. So that touched me a lot. Even today, whenever I think like that, whenever I go and buy something, if somebody is buying it for 10 rupees or $10, I wanted to get it for $7. That is something which went into my mind. Okay, that is what my, my job is. That is what my calling is. To innovate, to add value, and to reduce the price. So REC has given me the startup sparks. And during those days, you know, we were coming from, uh, you know, over a period of time, the thought process have changed. And there is a lot of collaboration started. Those days, that was not that kind. Everybody wanted to do something of their own. They don't want to tell your friend or they don't want to have more people coming into the, into the group and stuff like that. So, after engineering, I went for MBA 
in a master in business administration. We are a very small group, and I I, I got into the engineering college, uh, the MBA in Calicut University, Department of Management Studies. There are only fifteen students, fifteen students. And once one of the professor, a visiting faculty, came and said, "I don't want you to go and work for somebody, but I want you to provide food for more people. That is your calling." So he said, "Don't go and work, and get your salary only, but you need to provide food for others." That is another spark came into my mind. But then again, a, a, a person who don't have any money, you know that in our engineering college, we didn't have any kind of seed money. There's nobody give you a lot of money and say, okay, you start something. Everything need money. So this was my passion. It was in my mind all the time. And then I went in search of jobs, as all of us done. We worked several places. Then I thought, okay, I should put a cutoff line. When can I take off from the normal routine nine to five or eight to five or twenty four hours work? So I I thought, okay, I will change my business practice. or my business model at the age of 45 by the time i should be able to settle and then i should be able to move forward but there is lot of problems happened in my life during my initial years of life family issues uh, i lost my wife and two children to feed all those things happened but then i was very adamant that i should make a breakthrough i should i should get out So I have to say I was working with the U.S. government uh, in Bahrain. I was with U.S. Navy Fifth Fleet. I was their engineering director there. So I gave my resignation four days before my forty-fifth birthday. I didn't have much idea in my mind, but I wanted to. I don't want to lose that milestone. So I used to look at the Webster's. meaning of entrepreneur what is an entrepreneur entrepreneur is simply somebody who take risk somebody who take risk and uh, to make a profit make some something out of it so normal working days we think that we are not are we not taking risk yes every day we are taking risk but we are taking risk for somebody else it's not our money it is their money so we don't feel that we don't feel that but if it is our money we will feel it and it is very tiring to go for a job where someone tells you okay come here, come here at 8 o'clock and we are being manipulated according to their schedules for the benefit of the organization so i thought no i should be able to break from out that and then i have to do something of my own so i throw my resignation then in between these time i have acquired lot of skills which will be able to get me to an an entrepreneurial outlook or entrepreneurial uh, mode of life so what i was trying to say is i'm not saying 9 to 5 job is bad or anything but us youngsters like you know most of us are the most of us who are in this uh, tele telecall uh, conference are Uh, senior guys like you know there is not much time to do one more thing but who are who are youngsters viknesh or i don't know who are vaidya and pranati uh, anish i i hope you are all youngsters always keep that spark in mind it's not like tomorrow you have to throw your job away what you have to do is that you have to find you are working in a specific domain you have to find a non conflicting branch or anything where you can put some of your time and then produce something out of it so what is advantage imagine if jrd tata or birla or the big names in india they have not spend their time 
instead they went to work for somebody else we would not have got bigger bigger huge organizations where millions of people are working maybe it is not going to work out tomorrow but during your life span if you are able to make that change that will be really fulfilling so there was an interview before death to several people so they were saying that i couldn't do much i really wanted to do i really wanted to do a lot of things but i couldn't do all those things that is because of the commitments which we are taking in life so i was uh, in my sp- small uh, presentation i was trying to say everybody has to do an introspection take some time and think about what you want to achieve in your life money will come don't worry about the money money will come that is 100% sure it is the quality of your idea it is the feasibility of your your planning or your your product that will bring you money but what do you want am i capable of doing it if i am not capable you close your doors take a book notebook write it down how much risk i have taken during my school days am i the same one of the least students in the class no i studied a lot i burned the midnight uh, oil i was always struggling to be number one in the in the school when everybody was enjoying their life i didn't do it so i can take struggles so if that way you feel work yourself you will get your confidence that okay i can do a lot of things maybe you are not that good at talking but you can achieve that you have several friends who are able to communicate nicely and then the, the strength is the technology behind your thought so do an introspection take some time and i'm not going to give you everything and then you know i i cannot make everybody entrepreneurs but i my intent of this speech is if that is in your horizon think it out that is the only thing about this friendly discussion that's why i don't have any kind of powerpoint presentations it's not going to it's not going to make any difference think about think about yourself do an introspection and take a decision a time bound decision maybe it will work out maybe it will not nobody knows tomorrow we have breath in your in our nostrils but if god gave us enough years where we wanted to be and next thing what you have to do is you have to be ready to change you have to change your habits a little more work because it is not easy to work on two things long ago it was very difficult once we came out of the college we don't know where our friends are working we don't know what they used to do so in our alumni in our our year in 2010 when we started getting emails i told them instead of coming and just talking about religion politics fighting let us talk about some concerns let us talk about water pollution there is millions of topics let us make small groups and we can provide consultancy for that and let us think about bringing some technology from elsewhere to the cl- place where it is not available and we can have our own companies and once i learned mba i understand that is not at all difficult engineering is one of the toughest subject in the entire world really tough subjects and we are scaling that and when you grow older you will be managers senior managers bigger bigger positions and you will be able to run big stuff so if you can do that these small things are nothing but we are scared we don't know how to start a company we don't know how to set up an llc 
do a little more reading and start something of your own don't think about millions and millions of dollars think small think local and try to work on it it may not be what your line of work it is the risk which get you a profit and when you do that introspection and this uh, change uh, ready to change your attitude changes when your attitude changes that will reflect in your daily work life in your uh, home in your uh, in in all, on all your all, on all the horizons it will it will affect and it will make you better and two big things we have is global logistics and global col- collaboration we take advantage of the friends you have thank god we are coming from a a college where we have if you have 50 students 25 is from the same state and the rest 25 is from all over india some of them are foreign students too so that reach is really really big people do not have that benefit contact similar minded people maybe one year junior one year senior whatever it is call them and discuss about this and tell them i whenever i i, I, I meet my friends i used to tell them okay there is an opportunity but that, what that is what i don't see in uh, among our our friends they are very hesitant to talk about what they achieve or what their dreams so it is very easy to go and talk about politics go about religion what is that benefits me what is that benefit the society but instead i was telling a small thing that you know there is uh, pollution in our own, in, in our rivers there is bio biological uh, you know uh, food we can de- develop uh, or uh, that that is going to be helpful healthy and we can develop water from nowhere from the atmosphere i have seen machines which you put it in the desert it will give you water it takes air from the atmosphere and it convert to water hundreds and hundreds of technology those things don't think only the it is the only thing that is a major thing the major major part of it but think that way logistics i will tell you a story long ago you know chakka in a jack fruit it was available everywhere in kerala plenty and nobody wanted to eat you know there is a limit to eat the chakka so it was they just eat and then uh, you know and one uh, jack fruit uh, tree will have 50 safety 50 100 jack fruits so it go, goes based nobody sells it what smart guy at that time it's called canter it's a six wheel uh, pickup bigger pickup kind of stuff so they came from bangalore to kottayam uh, to kerala with some kind of a load and the vehicle was going empty so he said why don't you load jack fruit into my my uh, truck i will give you say 500 rupees they were very happy they loaded jack fruit so when it was moved from kerala to bangalore the price became 10 times because there it is not available you must have seen when you go through tamil nadu you will see chakachola with a price on it because it's not available so that is what is logistics logistics is get from the place where it is abundant move it to the place it is scarce and make money out of it simple so that is possible in this new age other thing is about as i told you about the global collaboration like with friends you can talk and then you can uh, discuss lot of things and come out with small groups see the thing is that let me tell you we are very successful in our mentoring program am i right we mentor a lot of students and several years why not we have small groups where we can produce entrepreneurs 
great ideas. We can transfer technology from US to India. Today morning, I talked to one of my friends. He's in the Middle East. I said, why don't you use one some of the US technologies? He said, sir, sir I have never thought of it. And we were taking it from the Far East. I said, you wanted to take crap from Far East or the best from US? Okay, let us think about it and work. Talk that way. Whenever you meet a friend, tell him that this is all what I can do. This is where I am. And this place, that is how we, we are not going to outsource everything to the entire world. We can give our technology and our capabilities to the outer world. Sorry, uh, to the to the external, uh, to the to other other countries. So as I as I told you, these things, and then another thing is the satisfaction. I always think when I do a work, am I getting the work job satisfaction? It is very very difficult because when I work for somebody. There is no time to enjoy the fruit of my work. By the time, three times the load is on me. But when you do something of your own, what will happen? You can relax. You can relax and think about it. Ah, see, I did something and then I came out with a product and it is taking care of the community. I will give you a small example. During this COVID, I was thinking, what can I provide to my local area, local community? I read a lot of things and something came up, something called micro greens. You must have heard of that. Simple thing. Uh, lentils, if you soak it in water for a day and then just spread it on a level surface with some paper and then if you water it very sparsely, uh, sparingly for two, three days, it will grow. And the fourth or the fifth day, you have to, you can take it and eat a salad. And it is, it is, a, it is a brother of the sprouts. You know, we used to eat sprouts. But sprouts is two to three days. The other thing is oh, four to five days. But it has got a shelf life of only one day. So I was working with this and then and I have a small team in Kerala, in Kerala and we started and then they were very skeptical. They said, no, sir, it's not going to work out and a lot of things, but the expense is very minimal. It's the cost of the pyre, only 125 rupees per kilo. And with a kilo of pyre, you can have around three, two, two, three kilos of uh, this lentils. But the thing is, I was able to communicate and motivate my people, my workers. And it is nothing like an additional thing. And it is an added thing what they were doing. And we started something called Majestic Microgreens. And we went to the first shop. They said, we don't have any problem. We put that here. Now we are catering to six shops in one kilometer radius. That's only we can do because we don't have uh, refrigerator, reefer vessels or something like that. So what happens is, I am very satisfied because I am giving, I am providing something which is without poison, which can be beneficial for even babies, older people, sick people. I am not becoming a multi-millionaire out of it or even big money out of it. But that is the satisfaction I get. That is what I have given. I was just giving you an example. Similarly, there is a lot of things, my dear friends, if you think you can come up with. Entrepreneurship is not like starting your own company. Definitely we have entrepreneurs here in this group itself. We are very smart people. That is, a, that, that is the ultimate thing of it. But there is something in between too. Do your work and then work towards that. See, you may ask, why am I wearing this cap? I have a logo. This is the logo of my company. Actually, it's called Triple I. I, I, I. Intellectual Information Interchange. So, the term stands for Intellectual Information Interchange. So, if you don't interchange the, informa interchange the information, it's of no use. And I always believe two heads are better than one head. So with that, I 
who wanted to open up, but then again, I won't be able to answer all of your questions. The intent of this speech, this discussion was for the younger generation, the promising engineers, they have a long way ahead. They can think about adding value to their life, adding value to the life of others and satisfy at the end of the days, looking back and said, I did good. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me this opportunity and it's a great initiative we have. It's again, again, again it's a close home discussion. There is nothing fancy in it. That's why I didn't have much of uh, slides and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful evening.